All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the In Demand Hairstylist podcast. I am, as always, so excited to be here with you today. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to invest in yourself, to invest in bettering yourself as a stylist, as a salon owner in the salon. Um, I don't take it lightly that you have taken a minute to join in and listen to what I'm going to share with you today. So I'm going to try and make it as impactful as I possibly can in this short amount of time that we have together today. So today I would love to talk to you guys about what to do when you plateau as a stylist or salon owner. So maybe you are doing really well in the salon. You're doing great. You're making good money. You are productive. You're busy, but you're kind of hitting this point where you're plateauing. And so today we're going to talk about six things that you can do in the salon to jumpstart both your income and your client count and your productivity within the salon and really jumpstart your your excitement, your passion, your fulfillment again, because a lot of the times we get um, in autopilot mode, especially once we've been doing hair for a while and we've been in the salon for you know a few years, sometimes we get into this place where we get a little comfortable and we forget about what it took to build to where we are today. And so today we're going to talk about that a little bit. I'm going to share with you six ways to get out of the rut of plateau and how to jumpstart your career again. So we're going to just dive right in. Okay. The first thing that you can do when you are in a plateau mode is to go over and review your scheduling. So what I mean by this is, are you maximizing the time that you're in the salon? Again, a lot of the times we can get into autopilot, especially when we feel comfortable in what we're doing. We've actually gained some confidence around the services we provide. And sometimes we get into this mode of autopilot where we're not really tracking our time. We're not really um, focused on how much time our services are taking. So I would just say, look at your scheduling and are you maximizing your time? Is there any service that you're currently doing that you could maybe adjust or tweak the timing just a little bit, even if it's by 15 minutes, because if you were able to shorten your service by 15 minutes on each client, you may or may not be able to accommodate an entire another client, which could totally jump start your income um, and boost your income again. So And if that's just one client a day, imagine if you were able to see three new clients a week and what that would look like in an entire year. So looking at your scheduling and seeing how much time do I allot for a full head of foils? How much time do I allot for um, a full head of balayage? How much time do I schedule for um, an extension move up? Is there anything that you can adjust in your schedule and in your in your timing that you can maximize the time that you are working in the salon? So especially now where many, many stylists are adjusting and pivoting their schedules and they're working sometimes four days a week, sometimes three days a week, sometimes even two days a week behind the chair. How do we make these two days, these three days that we're working behind the chair really, really count? How can we maximize our, ta- our time? So look at your schedule. Is there any service that you can shorten, adjust? Can you use an assistant to better utilize your time? Maybe you're working with an assistant, maybe you're not. But what I can tell you is four hands are better than two. And when you have an assistant helping you in either with the services or on the back end where it's the check-in, check-out process, when you have an assistant who is helping you 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 can move the service along more smoothly and more quickly. So this isn't about rushing your clients out the door. This is about giving an amazing experience in a, an efficient amount of time where they feel that they got the full experience without being rushed, but you're also staying efficient. So 
Can you use an assistant? Um, and can you adjust your timing to accommodate more clients, which we had talked about? So that would be that what I would say is just the first thing is look at your scheduling. Is there anything that you can adjust to maximize your time? What this will do is allow you to either accommodate more clients or you'll be able to work more efficiently to add services on to the clients that you already have if they choose to do so. So number one is scheduling. The second thing that you can do to get yourself out of a plateau mode is look at how can I upgrade? Are you offering upgrades to your clients? So some of these things may seem basic, but again, sometimes we forget when we are when we're busy, when we're making good money, we get content, we get um, comfortable. And sometimes we have to revisit some of the things that we did in the beginning to actually jumpstart our career. Again, jumpstart our income, jumpstart our uh, passion and excitement for what we're doing. So some of this might be things that you did in the beginning and you kind of fell off. So upgrades are what um, are you truly listening during the consultation to your client's needs. And again, this may seem basic, but I don't care if you're 10 years in or, or 10 months in, the consultation is always going to be one of the most important pieces. Even if you've been doing a client for years and years, you should be having a thorough consultation with them and making recommendations, changing things up, keeping it fun and exciting for your client. Nobody wants to be coming in, getting the same thing all the time. You might have one or two clients here and there that they've had the same haircut the entire time that you have been doing their hair, the same color. They never want to change it, but everybody wants to look and feel good. And so your job as the professional is to make recommendations. How do you do that? The only way that you can make recommendations is to truly listen to what their needs are. Ask the right questions, ask open-ended questions to your client and truly listen. And whenever they talk about pain points with their hair, because it changes every time, right? Like I'm getting more gray in my hair. So my texture is completely changing. My needs now are different than what my needs were five years ago or even two years ago. So as if I was going to see a stylist, I would want them to be making recommendations for me based off of how my hair is evolving and changing and, and, and adjusting. So how can you um, make an upgrade or some sort of um, change in what your client is currently getting done. So are you listening? Um, are you making recommendations based off of what you're hearing? So based off of what their challenges are, are you making recommendations? And the, the last part of this is what additional offerings could you have? So maybe your, your service menu has stayed pretty consistent over the last five years or more even. Is there anything that you could have on your menu that could be an additional offering for your client? What do upgrades do? Upgrades do a couple of things. When you upgrade your client or increase your average service ticket, you are not only boosting your income as a stylist, as a salon owner in the salon, and your client is getting a better experience. Your job is not to push things on them. It's to educate and make the recommendation and then they get to choose, but they can only choose what you're making recommendations for or what they know that you have to offer or what you have to choose from. Now, could you expand your offerings so that you have an additional source of income and revenue? That may be something to think about. Um, I'm not a huge fan of salons that offer everything and everybody does everything. I feel like it gets a little diluted, but certainly if you're somebody who is niched down and you're only offering one, two, three, or four services, maybe you could expand just a little bit and have some additional offerings, whether that be waxing, whether that be I mean, you could get creative with this. I feel like there's so many different things that you can do with offering additional services. And when you upgrade, um, this obviously boosts your income, your average service ticket. When you in upgrade and increase that average service ticket, it's going to boost your income. And typically that means that your clients are getting better service as well. 
a better experience in the salon. Okay, so number three, the third thing to do when you are plateauing as a hairstylist is to revisit your referrals. So A, do you have a referral program? B, are you talking about your referral program all the time? So a lot of the times, again, we get in this place of complacency, comfort, um, and we forget to be in that mode of building our business. We should always be, be building our business, right? So you never know, especially with the economy and things. It's just not, don't wait until you're at the point where you're hurting, right? Don't wait until the point where you all of a sudden are like, oh my gosh, I feel like my days are opening up. I feel like I'm having gaps. Like, what do I do? Always be in that mode of asking your clients for referrals, so if you're not doing it currently, make sure that you start doing that. How, how comfortable have you gotten with just doing the clients that you're doing? How comfortable have you gotten with just, you know, um, not marketing and promoting your business? So referrals are a huge source, one of the best sources of new clients. And as busy as you may be right now, at some point, there are going to be clients who fall off. It's just, it's statistically, you're going to, you're going to lose clients every single year for different reasons. So really honing in on that referral process, having a referral program, whatever that may be, to talking about the referral prog program on a, a regular basis with your clients. So um, the, the third thing around referrals that I want to share with you is that maybe right now you have a full clientele, but you want to kind of hone in on a specific type of client. So again, this is talking about your ideal client. I don't know if maybe you've heard of this before or you haven't, but honing in on that ideal client. What I always coach my clients to do is really focus on who are your top 10 favorite clients that you, that you do in this line, your top 10 absolute favorites. Like when you see their name on the book, you're just so excited because you love them, right? Is it because they, you have great conversations with them? Is it because they're the client who comes in and just lets you do whatever you want? They don't complain about the price. They rebook their appointments. They don't ever cancel on you. They purchase retail from you instead of on Amazon, right? So who, who are these top 10 clients? Those are the clients that you should absolutely be asking referrals from and rewarding them for the clients that they send you. So maybe you just don't do a full blown out referral program. I recommend it. You should be asking for referrals from everybody. But if you want to be more intentional about it, find your top 10 favorite clients, print a list of them out. Whenever they come in, you talk to them about your referral program. Let them know how much you love when they're in your book, how much you love when they come in to visit you, how much you enjoy doing their hair, and you would love to find more clients like them. If they have friends, if they have family who are looking for a stylist that you would love to accommodate them and then have like a nice handsome reward for that client and for the new client that they send in. Referrals are incredibly powerful and this could really jumpstart both your passion and excitement because you're getting more clients that you love and it can boost your income and it helps the client because they're finding a stylist who cares, who's excited and who they already kind of know, like, and trust because their friend comes to you or their family member already comes to you. And that is powerful. So the third thing is referrals. Number four is, are you maximizing your marketing? Maximizing your marketing can be a great way to get out of plateau as a stylist behind the chair. And the most underutilized marketing tool that I see is email marketing. Many of us use social media to connect with our potential clients, to, con to connect with our existing clients. Um, but beyond social media and beyond maybe what we do in the salon, I don't see a whole lot of marketing going on. Now, more than ever, is a great time to start using email marketing to connect with your clients when they are not in the salon. This is an email marketing. You could send weekly emails to 
let your clients know when you have openings and availabilities. Maybe they may not be able to take it, but maybe a client or somebody that they know may be able to take that appointment. So using it for openings and availabilities, letting them know what you have going on in the salon, giving them a behind the scenes, look at what life looks like in the salon and just letting them know what's new, what's going on, what services are you offering, what products are you using this week, what are you featuring, how can you educate them, how can you add value. And this is a way to serve your clients when they're not in the salon. But this is also a way that you can be recruiting your clients to come in sooner, to refer their friends, to you know, fill your schedule. And again, maybe you're completely already filled. That's fine. But you should still be doing email marketing to touch base with your clients. And again, just educate them about what you have going on in the salon. So are you maximizing your marketing? Meaning, are you constantly out there on different platforms, not just social media, not just Instagram, not just TikTok, right? Are you on multiple platforms promoting yourself, promoting your business? If not, this may be an area that can totally get you out of plateau mode and get new clients coming into your salon, getting more revenue coming through the door. And... um maximizing your marketing, especially around email could be a huge boost in getting you out of plateau mode. Okay. Number five is expand your skill set. So expand your skill set. If you have been again in that place of comfort, um, contentment, expanding your skill set can be very powerful for many reasons. One, to ignite you again, ignite your passion, because if you're bored, your clients are going to be bored. If you're giving off an energy of um, complacency, contentment, boredom, anything like that, that energy is going to shift and you're only going to attract what you put out, right? So it's the law of attraction. What you put out is what you're going to get. So let's get excited about what we're doing behind the chair again. How do you do that? Well, learn a new skill, expand your skill set. I think now, if you are somebody who in the previous five years has niched down really, really small, um, it may be advantageous to expand your skill set. Not saying you have to, no one knows what, no one has a crystal ball to see what the future is going to hold. But for me as a stylist, if I had niched down at this point, I would think about revisiting some of the services that I used to offer or adding just one more skill set to my toolbox so that I have other things to offer. Why is this important? This is important because your pool of potential clients widens whenever you have a skill set or multiple skill sets that you can offer. So if you're only offering one niche down service, your pool of people is smaller. That's good because you become the expert in that particular area, blonding, extensions, balayage, haircutting, um, textured hair, whatever it might be, you are the expert in that. However, your pool of people is smaller. Could you add one or two more skill sets to your toolbox that maybe complement your niche that you can offer to your clients? That can be a great way to boost your income, boost your client count, and you know, get your business out of that plateau mode where you don't really, you're not experiencing really growth. You're kind of just staying stagnant. So expanding your skill set um, is another way. So the last thing that I want to share with you guys, number six, which is my favorite personally, is hire, hiring. At the end of the day, if you did everything from one to five that I told you, you are still only one person. You will only ever be able to do so many clients unless you get robotic hands, which who knows, maybe at some point that might be a thing um, that can help you do more. You're only one person. You're only going to be able to grow so much by yourself. So at some point, hiring on another stylist, another service provider, Hiring somebody in your business that you can delegate other tasks off to that can open up more time for you to do the services that you want to do or work with clients. Hiring is your next step in growth. 
this is what will expand you and get you out of plateau mode. Again, even if you're a top performer, you're doing all of the right things, you are only going to be able to grow so much. You're going to stay stagnant. Yes, you can raise your prices. Yes, there are things that you can do, but you can only grow so much by yourself. At some point, you will have to expand or you get to expand, right? And that becomes the next new challenge for you as um, an entrepreneur. So hiring definitely will get you out of plateau mode. So some of you may be thinking, well, can I afford to hire somebody? That might be something that actually decreases my revenue and income because now I'm paying somebody. But the truth is that any, you have to make an investment in order to grow. You can do that with your education. You can do that with working out. You have to invest time in the gym in order to get more fit. You have to invest to, to have growth, right? So it makes no difference whenever we're talking about hiring in your salon. Yes, financially, you make an investment into this person with hopes that this will help grow and expand your business. So hiring is one of my favorite ways. That's how I grew my business because I could only do so much. I hired on an assistant who then became a stylist, who then became a revenue generator for me, right? And not only that, it's way more fun, in my opinion, to work side by side with somebody. It may be for you. It may not be for you. If you, you can do a lot on your own, you can absolutely do a lot on your own. And, and have that place where, you know, um, maybe you hit a place where you are really content. You're making great money. You are um, loving your schedule that you're working. You have balance in your life. And you're like, I really don't want any bigger than this. I don't want any more than this. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the sake of this podcast episode and it being how to get out of plateauing in your business, I definitely want to talk about hiring. and that being one of the most important pieces at some point. Now, I believe there's a place where you have to work up to that and be at a place where where you can hire somebody, um, but that's going to be a way to be able to accommodate double what you're making, double the impact, double the income, you know, double the opportunity for this person to come into your business and build and grow their own income and business behind the chair. So hiring. So just to recap, how do we get out of plateau? As a business owner, as a hairstylist, what things can we do to get out of plateau? Number one, look at your scheduling. How can you maximize your schedule? Number two, upgrades or increasing your average service ticket. How are you at, or what are you recommending to your clients? How are you um, making sure that they have the best experience? Are you listening to their challenges? Upgrades, number two, increasing average service ticket. Number three is referrals. Are you maximizing your referral program? Are you utilizing um, your current clients to gain ideal clients um, in your chair? So referrals is number three. Number four is maximizing your marketing, being on multiple platforms, sharing about what services you offer, what your salon is all about, what your values are behind the scenes, what you have going on, what openings you have, what, what products you love, um, where are you maximizing your marketing and are you maximizing your marketing? Especially this is a key piece is that email marketing is a huge piece. Number five is expand your skill set. When you expand your skill set, you expand your pool of clients that you can take and you also expand opportunity for revenue generating services in your salon. And number six is hire. Hiring people in your business to grow as a team, to maximize your income, to maximize your profits, and to continue growing your business. So I hope this was helpful for you as a stylist, as a salon owner, in how to get out of the rut of, of complacency, comfort, comfortability, how to get out of that rut and how to break through a plateau so that you continue to build your business behind the chair. I hope this was helpful for you guys and I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next episode.